Welcome, everybody. This is our scheduled talk with the amazing author and security expert, Patrick Wardle, somebody who I've interviewed a number of times over the year. My name is Paul Roberts, and I'm the director of editorial and content here at Reversing Labs. I'm also the editor-in-chief of a publication called Security Ledger. And Patrick is the founder of a new company called Double View, and also known for founding the Objective-C Foundation for a number of years an expert in the security of Mac OS systems, and you've got to talk at this Black Hat as well, which we're going to talk about that. Yes. Okay, so here's the question I'm sure everybody wants to know, which is, you know, much of the last 30 years, we've been talking about cybersecurity threats, but really mostly about threats to the Windows environment, Windows operating system. You've spent a lot of the last decade really reminding people that there are threats in the Mac OS system as well, that Mac OS is not immune to malware and stuff like that. Um, so for folks out there, enterprises are using Mac OS a lot more than they did 15 years ago. What should they know about the risks to the Mac OS system and what's out there? Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me and thank you all for attending. I appreciate that. So to talk nerdy about Mac OS security threats. I have been doing this longer than a decade. Maybe I'm dating myself, but it was interesting when I started. The short story was I was working for the government doing Windows reverse engineering and exploitation. When I left, I wanted to use those same foundational skills, but without stepping on anybody's toes, so I decided to take a look at Mac OS. And there's an analogy that another security researcher articulated well, and he said that at the time that Windows was like that house in the sketchy neighborhood in the inner city that had bars on the window and a dog and an alarm, but was still getting poked on and broken into. Whereas Mac was really the cottage out in the idyllic countryside that the back door was left ajar, but no one was really bothering that. That was 10 plus years ago. Now what we're having is suburban sprawl, let's just say, where that idyllic cottage is really maybe not as secure as it once was, because adversaries are, for better or worse, incredibly opportunistic. So as soon as we see an uptick in the macOS adoption, follows almost in lockstep that hackers, malware writers, are gonna start pay, paying more attention to that. And this is backed up by some data. Each year I look at the new threats that target macOS, and a year or two ago, over 50% of those new threats actually already existed on other platforms. Meaning that the adversaries basically said, Hey, wait a minute, we have some ransomware that works at Windows, or we have a backdoor or a stealer that works well on, on Linux. Why don't we port it to macOS? And that's exactly what they did. Either rewriting it with cross-platform frameworks, uh, or in some cases rewriting it from scratch, but with the same logical capabilities, I was also able to talk to their existing backend infrastructure. From an efficiency point of view, no brainer. And just to get back to the question of the enterprise, yeah, we're seeing Macs, especially in the US, but internationally as well, really become ever more prolific, especially in the context of the enterprise. And as I mentioned, in lockstep, we're almost seeing the sophistication and the prevalence of attacks targeting Mac OS just continue to rise. And we will continue to see that. I think the understanding of why Windows versus Mac is always you, you finish where the fish and exactly. need something percent of the I'm stealing that line. Enterprise is up and enterprise endpoints out there were running Windows, so if you're a cyber yeah. 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 But now what's interesting too is if you think about who uses the Macs, it's like the R and D team, the development team, maybe C level execs, those are probably the targets you want to go after. And also Mac users, and I'm gonna Mac user myself, so I'm gonna include myself in this statement. We are maybe a little overconfident in the security of Macs because for such a long time Apple has told us that Macs don't get malware. This is literally what their what their site said. And in parentheses said Windows malware. So I'm like, okay, this is like really splitting <laughs> yeah. Apple's hairs here. Yeah. The reality is that's definitely changing. So what like you said, you're working on Mac threats for more than a decade. <laughs> How have you seen those threats change over the time? And what are the trends that you see now that are most important? Yeah, so this is a, a great question because, and I always have an answer that's maybe slightly strange in that, Mac malware, and this part isn't strange, it's definitely getting more sophisticated. It's a little strange as I like that as a malware analyst because when I started doing Mac malware analysis, I was like, this is so lame, it's written so poorly, it's so unsophisticated, it's really incredibly uninteresting to look at. And we've only seen that change over the year. 
And I think this is a direct response to two things. First, Apple has definitely increased the security of Mac OS. So I like to pick on Apple. There's definitely room for improvement. But that having been said, they have definitely raised the bar. For example, now software that has to run on Mac OS has to be notarized. If you want to access the webcam or the microphone, you have to go to an authorization prompt. So what this is forcing the adversaries to do is evolve, use zero days in their malware, try to trick the user, maybe up the social engineering attack. And then in parallel, we're also seeing the sophistication of attacks that are detected, because I think the security tools are getting better. Back when I started, no one was even really running security tools on Mac, and the security tools that were there were I don't know how to say this nicely, they sucked. <laughs> and that was one of the reasons I started creating the Objective-C tools is because I wanted some software to protect my Macs and then figure sharing is caring. Answer your question, the sophistication of the attacks is definitely increasing. We're seeing nation states going after iOS malware. And a lot of times when these iOS implants are detected, if we look at the code, we can see that there's a Mac OS implant or capability as, as well. I can confidently say that any nation state is going to have incredibly sophisticated Mac capabilities. We haven't seen a lot of it yet, but I think that's, again, because our detection isn't maybe quite what it can be yet, especially when compared to Windows. Yeah. So you're doing a talk at this show, and the topic is really interesting, which is mining Mac OS crash data, crash reports, for evidence of compromise or malware. And I think you've all, if we're a Mac user, We've all stared at those crash logs and been like, wow, I wonder if there's anything interesting in here that I should be noticing. If you're not highly technical, it'd be really hard to find it. Um, but, uh, tell us what is in those crash logs that might be uh, useful for a company to pay attention to. Yeah, definitely. First, you're all invited. Hope to see you at the talk tomorrow. It's 40 minutes, so we'll really get into some neat internals. My favorite part is we're going to walk through some actual crashes that revealed some super interesting bugs that revealed all sorts of exploitable vulnerabilities and malware. And my goal of the talk is really to inspire people to take a closer look at crash reports because most of us probably look at crash reports with some disdain, right? They're generated when an application or program are using crashes, which for us is super annoying. But as Paul mentioned, there's actually a lot of really good data in this. And other vendors have been ingesting this. Microsoft, for example, has been analyzing crash reports for years looking for malware. And the main reason is malware is often not written as well as, say, software from the operating system vendor, which means it crashes a little bit more. Malware also is always pushing the envelope. They might be using private APIs. They might be trying to hide, do funky stuff. So you're always on the edge. And so if the operating system is updated or something goes a little bit wrong, the malware might crash, which generates a crash report. And so the talk tomorrow, we also go into how crash reports can reveal really interesting bugs, zero days in Mac OS, for example. But malware, if it's crashing, gives us a great kind of uh, signpost or trail that something's amiss if we look at the crash report. So in the crash report, we can see obviously what process crashed, but also why in the context of malware analysis, something, the fact that something crashed, we can take a close look at that and say, is this an unauthorized boss or something we didn't uh, expect? So kind of an interesting topic that traditionally has been looked at for how we fix bugs when software crashes. But I think there's uh, a lot broader, uh, more breadth that we can pull out from that. And all the details tomorrow. And yeah, so check out the talk. Only you all the secrets. <laughs> um, do we know if Apple is mining those crash reports for new threats, not the malware, other stuff, vulnerabilities? Because compared to Microsoft, I'd say they're a little less transparent on the security. A little less? A little less. <laughs> a lot less. Uh, I appreciate your they were kind of late. <laughs> they were late to the bug bounty thing Sorry. compared to Microsoft. Yeah. They've gotten into trouble or gotten flack for blowing off security researchers and being like talked to the hand. So what do we know about whether they use this stuff and are sure. they transparent in any way about what they're finding? Yeah, that's a good question. And I like that you touched on the fact that Apple isn't perhaps as transparent as they could be. I think it's just the cultural mindset there that it's like Apple versus the world. And even though we're on the same side, meaning our goal is to increase the security of the operating system so that end users are ultimately more protected, Apple doesn't quite see it that way or doesn't embrace it. And so, yeah, a lot of the information is one way, right? Security researchers were putting bugs and new malware to Apple. Apple does not go the other way. I mean, they detect a lot of new malware, but they're not sharing signatures with third-party AD companies, which 
I think they should. Would that be helpful? That would be very helpful because Apple, when they push out signatures for their X Protect product, it's only for a few samples. Widespread, sure, but a lot of times their signatures are somewhat brittle, not really behavior-based. And so if the malware author recompiles their malware or changes a little bit about it, it's gonna bypass Apple's signatures. Whereas third-party security companies often have maybe more comprehensive signatures. And I just think sharing is caring, right? You talk to anybody in security, they say it's very important with information to be shared with relevant parties. To answer your question, I'm actually not sure. Microsoft is very fairly public about describing why they do this. They talk about case studies and it's like, please, I will give you my crashing words. Apple, on the other hand, we have no idea. I would hope they do. If they come to my talk, which they will because there's some zero days that we will be revealing. <laughs> and um, spot the apple. And no more spot <laughs> the fed. Spot the apple. <laughs> He's a person scowling at me. Oh, <laughs> uh, but I would imagine that if they're not, they definitely should be. And also I hope they're more transparent. Let's just say. The other thing though, I will caveat that compared to Windows crash reports on Mac OS have less information. Apple is very privacy centric, which I very tools. And it might be a little tougher to find to analyze or parse those. But I think Apple should still be ingesting them and looking for malware or stale exploitation attempts. If the memory corruption vulnerability fails, what's it gonna generate? Crash report. There's been many examples of how previously unknown zero days and very sophisticated malware has been detected in this way. So I would imagine Apple is. I would also love for them to tell us about this, but I guess when Hell freezing <laughs> or pig fly, whatever the, <laughs> the statement is. Use your analogy. Okay, final question. You've run Objective C for a long time, and like you said, sharing is caring. So much of that work you just gave to the public domain just to help yeah. people out. But you've recently started a company, W, because Mac security is something that enterprises need to be worried about, any organization really. Talk a little bit about uh, W and kind of what you guys do. Yeah, so the kind of inspiration for W was a lot of companies would continually say, hey, we love the Objective-C tools. How do we use those in the enterprise? And I'm like, oh, these really aren't designed for the end user. They're really not designed for the enterprise with that in mind. And the struggle I saw that enterprises had was basically they would have, for example, a very competent, mature Windows product. But as Macs became more prevalent and they noticed adversaries hacking Macs more often, their customers were saying, hey, we need like a Mac EDR product because we're finally seeing through Apple's facade that Macs don't have malware. The reality is they do, and so we need to protect that. And these companies, though, would, would struggle in the sense that now they would have to find a Mac engineering team and Mac security researchers. And Apple does a really good job of hiring the best and the brightest. There's really a dearth uh, of Mac security experts and researchers that could build a EDR product. And so our idea was, W, was that we would build modular components that would be easily integrated into other products. We are building the core components, the low-level tech that then can be integrated into other EDR products so very quickly they can fill any gaps they have or reach parity with their Windows product without having to go out and hire an engineering team, train them, work them, uh, etc. Patrick Worrell, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. And those of you who are here, stick around. Patrick's going to be like, uh, signing copies of uh, the Artemac Malware. And thanks to all of you for showing up. Yes, pleasure. and again, thank you to Reversing Labs. They purchased a few copies of my books to give away to y'all. Let's do one more round of applause for Paul, Brittany, and Reversing Labs. Thank you so much. Sharing is king. I love it.